Open source AI has finally caught up, so it's time to save money and run them locally. So I've got four big subscriptions I want to cancel. I'm going to spend a week migrating a lot of these cloud models I use over to a local implementation. And I'm going to show you how. It may happen over three or four videos, so stay tuned. I've got Cloud Sonnet 3.5 on desktop. Also part of that is Sonnet 3.5 on mobile, $18 US per month. I used to run ChatGPT, but I switched to Sonnet 3.5 a while ago. For coding, I run Cursor Pro, which is $20 per month. And I also use Grok Premium for live news data on X, which is $8 a month. So in total, I could be saving $46 if I can get all this running locally. As you've probably heard, DeepSeq R1 has finally come out. It's a strong competitor to OpenAI O1 model and also Sonnet 3.5. It's fully open source and you can run the whole thing locally. So just heading over to DeepSeq.com, you can check out the comparison stats. As you can see, it is competitive to other models. Let's switch over to their Twitter. They've actually got a good graph. As you can see here, the AI model is great at maths and coding. So I want to test that out in today's video. So in order to run it locally, all you have to do is head over to olama.com slash download and download for your operating system the Olama install. A good choice to run with Olama locally is Open Web UI. It's a way to run the models and actually talk to them through a browser. There's some good documentation at their docs site, but basically go to the quick start guide and run it using Docker. I recommend you run Docker Desktop. Once you run the commands, you'll see that on Docker Desktop, Open Web UI will pop up as a server running in the background. Then you go back to Alama and you can actually install the model. So all you need to do here is select the model with the amount of parameters you want to run on your local machine. I'm running an old MacBook Pro M1 Max. I'm able to run 1.5 billion parameters, 7 billion parameters, 8 billion parameters locally pretty easily. However, when you get up to the bigger sizes, like 14, 32 and 70, it starts to struggle and overheat. Um, but I'm just showing you that old machines can still run this even though it might be a little bit slower response time. Um, make sure you have enough hard drive space to run it as well. So uh, the small parameter model is 1.1 gig all the way through to 43 gigs for the 70 billion parameter model. So you just select the model you want to run. It'll tell you the command here to run in the terminal. Once you run this command, it will download the model and then open up a prompt with it. The 1.5 billion parameter is pretty quick to respond. DeepSeq R1 is a reasoning model. It loves complex problems. So if you throw a complex problem at it, it will go through several responses of iterating through possible answers before it gets the, the correct answer. You'll see this through the think tags, which has an open think and a closed think, and then it will spit out the answer. So let's try giving it a harder problem. As you can see here, the think tag was quite short for the 1.5 billion parameter model. The response was really quick. Uh, it gives a really detailed answer. Uh, basically, I did a comparison between other models. Obviously, a good example of it comparing a complex set of problems and uh, spitting out an answer. All right, so let's try and use the biggest model on my machine that will work. So uh, that's the 70 billion parameter model. I just grabbed the Alama run command from there. I've uh, exited 1.5 billion parameter model. Let's enter the 70 billion parameter model here. This takes a little while to load up on an old M1 Pro Max. I'll do some serious testing uh, when I open up the web UI, which is a lot easier to read, um, especially around coding problems. And uh, what we'll do is actually get it to run through building a JavaScript game and we can test it out. So this is the 70 billion parameter model. It will spend a lot more time reasoning and thinking through the complex problem and giving out a better quality answer. So here you can see, here's a complex math problem. You can see how it's thinking about the, the problem. First it breaks down the left side of the equation, then it moves over to the right hand side of the equation.
So running the 70 billion parameter model on an old laptop is not a good idea. The laptop's almost overheating. I've got a fan blowing on it. It's also been about 10 minutes for the answer to happen. So what I'd recommend is you get a GPU machine, gaming machine uh, to run the 70 billion parameter model at home or maybe get the latest M4 MacBook. But what I'm gonna do is switch down to the smaller model after this, and uh, we'll get some better response times. Yay, so the answer's finally here. It's not written in LaTeX, so you can barely understand it. So let's get the web UI up and running and we can actually see it properly. We'll run the same test with a lower parameter model. So what I'll do is just scroll up to the top, copy paste the question, and then launch the web UI. Okay, so the smaller parameter model was able to respond more quicker. It still took it two minutes. So here's the answer from the 70 billion parameter model. Okay, so we've just compared the 8 billion parameter model answer to the 70 billion parameter model answer. And uh, basically it's getting the same final answer. So a complex maths question is the same for both parameter models. Obviously one takes a lot longer to get to the answer. So with the 8 billion parameter model, we can also upload PDFs. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do, because the cutoff was middle of last year, I found some relevant news that's happened in the last 24 hours, which is basically Donald Trump, the new president of the US, has signed a whole bunch of executive orders. One of them that I'm going to ask the 8 billion parameter DeepSeek R1 model on is the TikTok ban for 75 days. Let's see if we can answer it correctly. So there's no way it should know the answer to any of these questions. So let's upload the PDF. And uh, what I'm going to ask is how many days was the TikTok ban extended by? And let's see if we can answer the question based on the information that's inside the PDF. Okay, so you can really easily see how long the thinking section goes for. It was pretty quick, like 30 seconds to answer on a old MacBook Pro M1 Max, uh, 8 billion parameter model, running locally, no cloud. The think tags, it's going through the whole document, assessing what, what it's about. It, TikTok's only mentioned twice in the whole document, so I quickly found that there's 75 day uh, suspension. And after the think tag, it goes into the answer, which is basically the TikTok ban was suspended for 75 days. So that's the correct answer. So yeah, you can upload all your knowledge, PDFs, spreadsheets into uh, DeepSeek R1, 8 billion parameter model, running on an old laptop, uh, have a web interface through Open Web UI, and then also have the ability to upload documents or knowledge to ask questions of it. So locally, I'm pretty much achieving most of the objectives of ChatGPT Lord of what I'm paying for on my desktop and replacing that with a locally run model. So that's pretty good. That's a win. There's a few benefits of running it locally. It's a lot less risky. The provider of the model can't spy on what your, your questions and answers and knowledge that you upload is because it's all running locally. When compared to running it in the cloud where you're actually using their deployment and speaking to their website, uh, there's potential for them to spy on what you're saying. Uh, running it locally is a lot more secure. Any PDFs and spreadsheets that I upload to it aren't going into the cloud. They're just staying locally on my machine. I'm also not paying monthly fees or a SaaS subscription model. Um, so I'm saving a bunch of money there. Some of the bad sides is you basically need a semi-powerful machine to be able to run it. Um, yeah, my computer's like three years old. So it's getting a bit older now, overheating for the bigger models. So I have to run the smaller ones, which may not be as accurate. So 
So I'm pretty confident I'm able to replace a ChatGPT or Claude Sonnet 3.5. That's only for the desktop. It's going to be a bit of effort to try and replace the app on my mobile phone, which I sometimes use on the go. Um, so let's try and figure that out for the next video. It's great to see that the fully open source and available uh, AI models are out there on Hugging Face, they're out there on Alama where you can quickly download and run it locally. That they're actually competitive to models that are cutting edge like OpenAI 01 model or Claude Sonnet 3.5. So the next few videos I'll be trying to run uh, DeepSeek R1 on my mobile phone. Uh, I don't know if I can achieve that. I might have to run a server somewhere to do it, either locally or in my own bare metal cloud provider. The video following that, I will also try and integrate DeepSeek into Cursor. There may be an easy plugin or extension to do that. So that would be another video. And then the next video, I'll be trying to hook it up with live news data feeds to try and uh, summarize what's happening in the news and on Twitter. So I hope this video has helped you look at other options that you can use instead of paying AI cloud services um, up to say $18 or even $200 per month uh, for cloud fees. You're able to cut that cost down and uh, take control of your AI and run it locally on your machine at home. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for the next one and I'll see you later. Bye.